Hello and welcome to this solution video. I hope you're doing well. If you like this video and appreciate my efforts, please give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe to Math United. Let's start with question number one. A particle of mass 1.6 kg is projected with a speed of 20 meter per second up a line of greater slope of a smooth plane inclined at 8 degrees to the horizontal. So let's say this is A and this is horizontal. It is projected up from this place upwards at 20 meters per second where tan A is 3 over 4. Tan will not be useful here, so let's find sine because sine will be the sine and cos are used, right? So suppose this is A and uh, tan is 3 over 4, that means opposite over adjacent. So by Pythagorean theorem, this will be square root 3 square plus 4 square here, yeah? which is 9 plus 16 square root 25 which is 5 units whatever it is so uh, we will need sine a in this case so sine a will be opposite over hypotenuse 3 over 5 this is what I'm going to use here use an energy method to find the distance that particle moves up the plane before it comes to the rest suppose it comes to the rest here okay v is equal to 0 and this is the height and the distance they're asking is this x from here till here how much distance it traveled up okay so energy equation what is energy equation it is the work done by applied force is the sum of work done by resistive force plus change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy okay so work done by applied force is nothing because it is projected projected means in this whole distance of x there is no force of being applied on it what whatever distance it is moving it is moving because it was projected so there is no force being applied in this distance so zero no work done by applied force since the surface is smooth this Resistance will also be zero. In that case, we ignore the air resistance. Now, distance uh, difference in kinetic energy will be half m, m. M is given to us. How much is the mass? 1.6. Last velocity, final velocity, which is zero square minus initial initial velocity square, which is 20 now plus change in potential energy which is mgh right m is 1.6 g is 10 and height final height is this height h minus what was the initial height from the ground zero and they are asking us to find what distance okay so there is no distance here only height is there so let's go to this drawing again so we can say that h over x will be equal to sine a yes or no opposite over hypotenuse is equal to sine a sine a is known to us now so we can say that h over x is equal to 3 over 5 but our purpose is to find x let's isolate h in this case so uh, let me go it here h by cross multiplication will be 3 over 5 and x goes multiplies here 3x over 5 this is h so that's what i'll replace here and we'll get this so uh, this is going to be negative right so let's write 0 equal to i'm ignoring this 0 now this can cancel here 0. Point 8. So 0 0.8 times negative 400. Keep in mind, square is with only 20, not with negative. So it will remain negative. Then uh, 16 
and h in place of h we will write 3 over 5x so let's bring this to the other side first let's multiply the 0 0.8 times uh, 400 will be 320 so positive 320 now when it goes to the left side it becomes positive here we are 16 times 3 over 5 x now to find x we'll cross multiply this 5 will multiply with 320 over 16 times 3 is 48 yeah 16 and multiply they are multiplying 48 and x remains here just put this in a calculator and you get your answer let me put it 16 times 20 16 times 3 50 times 20 100 over 3 or you can write 33.3 meters is the distance from bottom till uh, the top place okay let's go to question number two question number two a particle of mass 2.4 kg this is 2.4 kg is held in equilibrium by two light inextensible strings these were the strings one which is attached to point a okay and the other to point b the strings make angle of 35 degrees and 40 degrees with the horizontal this is the horizontal okay find the tension in each of the two strings so let's say that this tension here is okay first let me convert this 2.4 kg into newtons so it will be 24 newtons downwards and now this is tension 1 in this string and tension 2 in this string they are not same string so they'll have different tensions in each of the two strings so we have to find it first let's uh, convert these tensions into their horizontal and vertical components this will be t2 cos 40 because angle is here wherever is the angle that component becomes cos the uh, component in opposite direction let's say upwards will be the sine components t2 sine 40 of the same t2 okay similarly here it will be t1 cos 35 degrees and uh, it will be t1 sine no yeah sine 35 degrees so there are two forces upwards two components and one on left and right so let's start with left and right because they are the only ones and because it's an equilibrium it's not moving anywhere so these two forces must be equal so t1 uh, cos 35 is equal to t2 cos 40 yeah because they are in equilibrium so let's isolate t1 t1 will be uh, cos 40 over cos 35 by cross multiplication right t2 so this became denominator here i wrote the numbers first i'm not going to simplify it because i'm going to substitute it in second equation which will be because of the vertical this was horizontal forces now we'll talk about the vertical forces in vertical forces 24 newton is the sum of these two because they are also balanced so it will be t1 sine 35 plus t2 sine 40 degrees is equal to 24 right and we got t1 earlier so we'll put this t1 in place of this t1 we'll write this one cos 40 degrees over cos 35 degrees t2 that was t1 right now sine 35 is still there plus uh, let me write sine 40 first La sine 40 degrees t2 equal to 24 and we can see that t2 is in both let's take that t2 here and write everything else here so cos 40 
over cos 35 multiplied by sin 35 plus just sin 40 here. If you want to take a pause, take a pause the video and see how I got it. This multiply by this and t2 is already out, so I, it is out plus sin 40 t2 it is equal to 24. And now to find t2 we will just carefully make this whole of it, this whole of it denominator here. But I don't want to put all of this here so I will put very carefully this in my calculator and find what is this equal to. Okay. So let me use my calculator. By the time I do this, I would like to request you to like this video, share with your friends and subscribe to Math United. This will motivate me to make many more videos in future too. I type all these questions myself before uh, uh, solving them to avoid uh, copyright issues. So what I'm getting here now after solving, simplifying this one is 1.179 and if I put this again in my calculator I'm getting 20.3531 dot 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 so we can round it off to two, one decimal place 20.3 uh, and that was a tension, right? Newtons. That is what? T2. Yeah? Now we have to find T1. And for T1, we already know the equation, this one. Which is cos 40 over cos 35 multiplied by 20.3 now. I will, I will write this whole number, okay? I will not write just 20.3 and I get how much? 19.03362. So I can say 19.0 Newton. This is T1, this is T2. Moving on to question number 3. Question number 3 says the diagram shows a velocity time gram. Okay, we can see that the motion of a bus and they have explained everything here which is this drawing. Find the distance covered by the bus in first eight seconds. That is the A part. So basically we have to find the area under this line. That's it. Because it's a VT graph. Area under the graph gives us the distance and we have to find zero to eight seconds. That means under this line which is a triangle. So what is the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle is base, which is 8, times height, which is 12.6, divided by 2. That's simple. Just put this in a calculator, we get this. So it will be 4 and 50, 50. 50.4 meters is the distance covered in first eight seconds next find the value of a this find the value of a so we know that here v is zero here uh, let's call it u u is 12.6 and let's count this as w okay so Let's apply the equation V equal to U plus A T in this case. Okay. So for in this portion, this portion V is not V, it is W. So it will be W equal to U is 12.6. Because acceleration is a deceleration here. So let's call it minus A. And time from uh, 48 to 62 will be 62 minus 48, 14. This becomes our equation for W, which is 12.6 minus 14A. Now, we have to go to the second part, which is this one. And here we have actually V is equal to 0, and same equation will be used. 
v is 0. Now u for this section, again the deceleration is constant in this section. So it will be w and w's value we know 12.6 minus 14a. Okay, this is w and then plus 80 and a in this case is minus 2a. Deceleration is 2a, that's what they are saying here, 2a meters per second square. But how much time is there from 62 to 70 is 8 seconds. So we can see that a is the only constant here which will give us the value now, which is 12.6 uh, minus 14a minus 16a. This is 30a minus 30a. I'll bring it to the other side. Positive 30a equal to 12.6. A will be 12.6 divided by 30, which will be 0 0.42 meters per second square. Okay, done. So let's go to C part, which says find the average speed of the bus for the whole journey. So average speed. And we know it is distance over time. So total distance. Huh? So total distance will be the total area under this whole curve. So uh, time is known to us 70. So there's no problem about 70, but we need to know the distance. We know 50.4 was the distance for the first triangle. So write, write 50.4 plus. Let's find the area of this rectangle now. What is the area of this rectangle? Let me do it somewhere else and keep on adding here. So the length is 40. 8 to 48 is 40 and 12.6 so 12.6 times 40 oh it's the same thing so it will be 50.4 no 504 because 12 times 4 12.6 times 4 we already know 50.4 in this case and it is 0 extra so 504 okay third part this trapezium now Uh, I have to let me use this space for trapezium trapezium's area is first this length okay first parallel line which is 12.6 then second parallel line which is w and w we got as how much we did not find w so let's find w here w is equal to 12.6 minus 14 times a we got a 0.42 Okay, let me see how much is that. It comes out to be 6.72. So 6.72. So first parallel line 12.6, second parallel line 6.72 divided by 2, multiplied by the distance between those two lines, which is 14 in this case. Okay, so let me see what is 12.6 plus 6.2 times 7. It comes out to be 135.24. And this is what I'm going to write here. 135.24. And lastly, this triangle. So for this triangle, we'll be having base times height. Base is how much? Base is this, 8. So 8 times height, height we just came to know 6.72, which was W, okay, divided by 2. So this will be 6.72 multiplied by 4. 6.72 multiplied by 4 is 26.88. 26.88, this is the total distance traveled and we have to divide it by total time, which is 70 seconds from here to here. There is no change in direction, so distance will be just whatever is the area, 
we don't have to worry about this let's see what it comes out to be by the time i do this i request you to like this video share with your friends and subscribe to math united what i'm getting here is 10.236 so i will say 10.2 what was what was what were they asking average speed right meters per second that's the answer question 4 two particles p and q of masses 6 kg and 2 kg respectively lie at rest 12.5 meters apart okay so one particle is here one particle is here and the distance between them is 12.5 okay on a rough horizontal plane the coefficient of friction between each particle is 0 0.4 and particle in plane particle p is projected towards q with 20 meters per second so u is 20 meters per second show that the speed of p immediately before the collision with q is 10 square root 3 here whenever it reaches here that is 10.3 means when it covers a distance of 12.5 meters the speed reduces to 10 square root 3 meters per second that's the question okay that's we have, that's what we have to show so let me uh, use the uh, equation v square equal to u square plus 2as okay so v square we want to show so we don't know it but we know the initial velocity is 20 square plus 2 times acceleration is also unknown and distance is known to us which is 12.5 meters it covered so let's find acceleration first and for that we need to uh, find what is the applied force okay so from here to here it has been projected just like uh, the question number one of this paper it has been projected uh, where the, the written projected so uh, there is no applied force after that it is left on its own so during this distance of 12.5 there is no applied force so we know that the net force is equal to ma which is applied force minus the resistive force mass of this particular object is uh, p yeah p is 6 kg so 6 times a applied force is 0 but resistive force will be there what will be the resistive force of this it will be the reaction force which is uh, 60 newtons downwards and 60 newtons upwards also so resistive force which is frictional force in this case will be mu times r the coefficient of friction times reactive force reaction force so it is 60 and it has been given 0 0.4 that will be the resistive force so 0 0.4 times 60 so a will be this will be in 24 0 0.4 times 60 is 24 so minus 24 divided by 6 this 6 will become denominator so a comes out in minus 4 meters per second square which we will use here now so v square equal to 400 plus 2 times minus 4 times 12.5 so v square equal to 400 and this is uh, 8 12.5 times 8 will be 100 so minus 100 v square equal to 300 square root both sides and definitely it is 10 square root 3 meters per second we have shown it what we wanted okay in the collision p and q coalesce okay so when uh, p came to meet q the speed of p was 10 square root rather let's call it u it's initial in this case now meters per second but after collision they coalesce they become one body okay 
find the loss of kinetic energy all right due to the collision okay so uh, loss of kinetic energy not difference are huh? they saying loss they have already confirmed it it is loss so it will be kinetic energy initial minus kinetic energy final what was the kinetic energy initial so kinetic energy initial was the kinetic energy of p which is half m its mass was 6 and v it was projected at 20 meter per second but before collision it was this so we can't use 20 we have to use before collision it was this half m v square plus what was the kinetic energy of q mass is i have to see mass of this was 2 kg so 2 and its speed was velocity was 0 so i'm finding kinetic energy initial in this case okay so this 2 and 6 will cancel out so it will be 3 times 100 times 3 300 and this is 0 because this is 0 square so 900 joules was the initial kinetic energy now kinetic energy final we have to find this which will be half now both of them coalesce that means they became one body 6 plus 2 kg 8 and v square we do not know so we have to find v for that we'll do here we'll use conservation of momentum to find v so in his, uh, what does it say it says m1 u plus m2 u2 let's say u1 here will be equal to m1 plus m2 because they coalesce times v that's what conservation of momentum says so m1 is 6 kg its speed was 10 square root 3 it was 2 kg but its speed was 0 now they become 6 plus 2 8 kg and their velocity will be together this is 0 so v is 60 square root 3 over 8 yeah that's the v which we'll use here 60 square root 3 over 8 so this cancels this 4 so what do we get here let me write 4 multiplied by 60 square root 3 6 0 0 square root 3 square root complete 3 divided by 8 oh, this is square root 8 also okay 64 just put this in a calculator and you'll get what is final kinetic energy let me use my own calculator for this by the time i do this i will request you to like this video share with your friends and subscribe to math united i think i'm the first person to make this solution video on the internet and i'm typing these questions for you so that there is no copyright issue so the hard work goes in please subscribe to math united okay what i'm getting here is uh, 675 joules so loss will be 900 which is initial minus 675 uh, 225 joules okay what is the next question it says the coefficient of friction between r that the coal the body when they coalesce after that r and the plane is 0 0.4 again obviously find the distance traveled by the particle r before coming to rest so this is r which is 8 kg its speed was how much 60 square root 3 over 8 so it's u in this case now is 60 square root 3 over 8 and it goes goes and stops here so that where v is 0 they're asking us what is the distance traveled so we'll again use the equation v square equal to u square plus 2 a s 
Now v is zero, final velocity is zero. U is known to us, which is sixty square root three over eight plus two times acceleration is not known. S they are asking us to find, and acceleration will be found again. Since this uh, this particular coalesced body is moving on its own, there is no applied force. So we'll use the same formula we used again in previous questions. F net, which is equal to M A, is equal to applied force minus resistive force. Mass, in this case, is 8 kg. Acceleration, we don't know. Now, we have to find applied force. Rather, we already know it. It is zero. Nothing is touching it during this distance. But we know that this uh, resistive force is the force of friction. Force of friction will be mu times r. Mu is given 0 0.4. Its weight is 80 newtons. That means the resistive force will also be, the reaction force upwards, normal contact force will also be 80 newtons. And that's what we will write here. So it is 32, yes, 32. Uh, 32 uh, newtons. Yeah, so 32. So A becomes minus 32 over 8 minus 4 meters per second square. Okay, that's what we'll use here. Minus 4. So 0 equals to 3600 0 times 3 complete and over 64. Every part squared minus 8s. 8s goes to the left side and becomes positive equal to 3600. Should I multiply? No need. Okay, over 64. So S becomes 3600 times 3 over 64 times uh, 8. Yeah, this cross multiplies and multiplies with 64. Let me use my calculator again. 3600 0 times 3 over 512. 21.09 three seven five dot dot dots there's so many but we have to round off to one decimal place which will be twenty one point one meters after this distance the two bodies stop okay question number five now which is this one the diagram shows a particle one point two kg on this side one point six kg going over a pulley and uh, there is, okay, they are rough surfaces, both of them. Mu is the coefficient of friction and we have to find it because they are in limiting equilibrium. So, we should see first of all whether it's moving this way or that way. But we should know, though I will find it out, but we should know that this is heavier and it the angle is also same. It's component in this direction will be 60 1.6 times 10 g 1.6 g which it becomes 16 sine 50 degrees and its component in this direction will be 12 sine 40 degrees not only the number in front is lesser here but the angle is also lesser the for sine the lesser the angle the lesser the value that means definitely it is going to move this way this is heavier, this one. And let me evaluate that to prove it. So 16 sine 50 is a, a let me use calculator, so 12.257. And 12 sine 40 equal to 7.7135 and that's confirmed. This is lighter, this is heavier, so this will tend to move this way. But they said it is in limiting equilibrium. That means some other force is joining this force, which is the frictional force, right? Which is mu times r. Mu, we don't know. 
what R we can find for this this will be 12 right the component in this direction 90 degree to the surface will be 12 cos 40 and this will also be 12 cos 40 to balance it out and that becomes our R similarly there will be a resistive force here also the frictional force which will try to stop this particular object and since this is a mu r here this will also be mu but not the same r it will let's call it r1 okay what will that be the r1 in this case will be like this it will be 16 because that is the weight of this mass 16 cos 50 degrees because it is on this plane what I'm trying to say is there will be three resistive forces which will be balancing out this one. So one is this, one is this frictional force and one is this frictional force, three of them. So let's write all of them to make it limiting equilibrium. So 16 sine 50, I will write it first. Will be equal to 12 sine 40. plus mu r which is mu is unknown so i'll write just mu and r is known to us 12 cos 40 plus this also mu r1 mu is mu r1 is 16 cos 50 degrees okay so now uh, let me bring this one to the other side because they are uh, we can simplify them 16 Rather, let's not simplify them. Let's just keep on writing like this so that we get the perfect answer. Sine 40 is equal to, both of them have mu, so let's take that mu common and we'll be left with 12 cos 40 plus 16 cos 50. To find mu, we'll cross multiply and this part will become denominator of the other part. So mu will be 16 sine 50 minus 12 sine 40 divided by 12 cos 40 plus 16 cos 50. just carefully put everything in your calculator if your calculator is capable just put a bracket here so that this is divided properly some people don't put bracket and that's why only the second part is divided so put a bracket here in your calculator and you'll get this let me do it myself by the time i'm doing this i would request you to like this video because a lot of efforts go into writing these questions then solving them making videos editing and uh, then giving you the solutions so please like this video share with your friends and subscribe to math united only eight percent of the people are subscribed to my channel 92 percent just watch and go away so please subscribe to math united what i'm getting here is 0 0.233 and there are more digits but three significant figures here this is the answer A car of mass 1300 kg is moving on a straight road. A. On a horizontal section, the car has a constant speed. This is important. Constant speed means there is no acceleration. Of 30 meter per second, there is a constant force of resistance. This resisting the motion calculating kilowatt, the power developed by the engine of the car. So power is the applied force multiplied by the speed at that instant it is going at okay speed we know 30 right but we don't know applied force so for applied force we'll have to see that there is no acceleration acceleration is zero right and we know that the net force ma is equal to applied force minus resistive force since a is zero that means this hole is also zero so we can say that fr which comes to the left side becomes positive is equal to applied force 
whatever is the resistive force is applied force and they have given resistive force as 650 newtons so we'll in place of applied force we'll adjust 650 and multiply this 65 and 195 0 0 so it becomes 19.5 kilo watts that's the power given that the power is suddenly increased to 9 kilo watt by 9 kilowatts not 2 because 19.5 was already it increased by 9 kilowatts so power now is 19.5 which was earlier plus 9 28.5 kilowatts okay find the instantaneous acceleration of at that particular instant when the speed was 30 meter per second what was the acceleration so let's convert this to watts again never use kilowatt okay you have to use watts only so now we know we can find same thing we can root power is applied force minus so multiplied by speed speed is 30 power is 28 500 so we can find applied force yeah which will be 28500 divided by 30 okay so this cancels which will be 950 newtons that's the applied force and now they're asking us the acceleration so m a is equal to applied force minus resistive force mass was uh, not given here how much 1300 kg was the mass so 1300 a equal to 950 is applied force and resistive force is same how much was that 650 so 1300 a is equal to 300 a is 300 multiplied by 1300 which will be 3 over 13 0 0.230 okay 237 okay so it comes out to be 0 0.231 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration in this case. Uh, we have one more part of this. On a section of a road inclined at sine inverse 0 0.8. So suppose this is the inclination and this angle is sine inverse 0 0.08. The resistance to the motion of the car is this. So there is a resistance and it is going up or down. Travels downwards. So resistance is this way. 1000 plus 20V. That is the resistive force. When the speed of the car is V meters per second. Okay. The car travels downwards along this section of the road at a constant speed again. So no acceleration again force applied will be equal to force resistive force okay with the engine working at this okay find this constant speed so uh, power is 11500 watt so what will be the applied force first applied force will be power divided by the speed this is the one right and which is in this direction one one five zero zero over v there is one more force downwards which is uh, due to the weight of this vehicle okay and the weight the mass was 1300 kgs that's what we know so it will be 13000 sine 
theta if i say this is equal to theta okay this angle is theta these two forces are pulling it uh down but this force is resistive force which is trying to stop it and they are equal so i can say 13000 sin theta which is 0.08 because sin inverse is 0.08 so sin theta will be 0.08 0.08 plus 11500 over v will be equal to 1000 plus 20v this becomes the equation we have to find v constant speed so we can do that first of all we should take care of this v the denominator is v so we will multiply the whole equation by v so that this v is cancelled out so first 13000 times 8 13 times 8 is 104 so it will become 1040 and multiplied by v also this multiplied by v this v and this v will cancel out so we'll be just left with 11500 1000 times v will be 1000v 20 times v will be 20v square So it becomes a quadratic equation now. So let's bring everything to the right side because twenty is positive here. So I'll write twenty v square first, then thousand, one thousand v minus one thousand forty. So it'll be minus forty v, and this will also become negative minus one one five zero zero. Quadratic equation. So let's divide the whole equation again by twenty because. that will make it simpler okay so 0 is equal to v square minus 2v minus 0 and 0 cancel and the half of this will be 575 okay this becomes very simple equation you can use quadratic formula or you can use uh, your calculator itself i am using splitting the middle term And zero equal to v square minus twenty five v plus twenty three v minus five seventy five. Twenty five times twenty three is five seventy five, and I'll complete it here. Uh, zero equal to v taken common v minus twenty five plus twenty three v minus twenty five. V minus twenty five is common in both. V plus twenty three remains. So this gives me v minus twenty five equal to zero. V is twenty five meters per second. This gives me v plus twenty three equal to zero. V equal to minus twenty three meters per second, which is not possible. So this is the answer for us. The constant speed they were asking. Okay. Question number seven, the last of this paper. A particle moves in a straight line from from O before coming to instantaneous rate x, and this is these are the equations of its velocity. Can you see v, where k is a constant? It is given that there is no instantaneous change in t equal to eight. There is eight here. There is eight here. There is no change. They have not talked about two. but i'm sure this will also be no change but because they are replaceable we can consult it find the distance ox distance we have to find first let me confirm that there is no instantaneous change here also so v at at t equal to 2 so the first one will become v equal to 7.2 times 2 square which is 7.2 times 2 28. 8 meters per second let's see if this is also giving me 28.8 okay v equal to 30.6 minus 0.9 times 2 30.6 minus 1.8 yeah it is also 28.8 so there is no instantaneous change here also it's a continuous graph Okay, let me try to imagine this graph. Okay, 
from 0 to 2 there is a quadratic and it's a positive quadratic so that means it will be something like this and we'll reach 28.8 here and this time is how much just two seconds yeah now after that is linear but negative slope uh, from 28 to 8 okay let me find what is the speed at 8 seconds according to this so v equal to 30.6 minus 0 0.98 30.6 minus 8 23.4 so not much reduction so the time is 8 seconds and the speed here is 23.4 so x is the place when it goes to a, a instantaneous rest okay at x instantaneous rest at point x so suppose this is it's a, it's a reciprocal kind of graph so let's say this is the graph and this is x where it is v becomes zero again all right they're asking to find the total distance ox so basically they're asking us to find the distance under this vt graph this distance and this one since they're saying instantaneous rate, that means it whenever whatever whenever it crosses this x axis or t axis, after that we are not bothered. Okay, so first from zero to two, we'll integrate seven point two t square. Then we'll get positive answer again from two to eight, thirty point six minus 0 0.90 and then 8 to some unknown uh, number so that unknown number we have to find I'll find it later first let me write 1600 over t square plus kt dt okay to find this limit here I will to what I will we know that is at instantaneous rest that means the velocity will be zero so we'll find at what time so here uh, v0 is equal to 1600 over t square plus k t and k is also not known to us so I will find k first all right let me find k first okay so at 8 there is no change in velocity that means this velocity and this velocity will be in exactly same so let me write here 30.6 minus 0 0.9 and time is 8 which is 23.4 we already know or rather let me write 23.4 in this 23.4 equal to 1600 over t square or oh sorry 8 square e plus 8k yes so 1600 over this will be Go, taken to the other side 23.4 minus 1600 over 64 equal to 8k okay let's see what we get here uh, 1600 divided by 64 is 25 so 23.4 minus 25 equal to 8 k minus 1.6 equal to 8k so k comes out to be minus 1.6 over 8 which is minus 0 0.2 this is what i will use in place of k here so let me use it here 0 
equal to 1600 over t square minus 0 0.2 t okay what is that t so 0 0.2 t equal to 1600 over t square cross multiply t square will multiply with t it becomes t cube and 0 0.2 will come and take its place 1600 over 0 0.2 which is 8000 okay so cube root both sides now t comes out to be 20 cube root of 8000 is 20 seconds and that's what i'm going to use here okay so let's integrate them now which should not be a big deal so it will be 7.2 t cube over 3 plus c 0 to 2 plus 30.6 t minus 0 0.9 t square over 2 2 to 8 and plus d also plus this will be t to the power minus 2 so minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 so minus 1600 t to the power minus 1 minus k is known to us now which is 0 0.2 0 0.2 t square over 2 plus e a constant e and that is from 8 to 20 that's it we have to just substitute the values and we'll get it let me do it here okay 7 point this cancels out 2.4 so 2.4 2 cube minus 2.4 0 cube c and c will cancel out so i'm not writing it and rather there's no need to put a bracket also because they are pluses so plus 30.6 times 8 and this can also cancel out 0 0.45 minus 0 0.45 t square 8 square minus 30.6 2 plus because they are negative and we are subtracting it so that will become plus 0 0.45 2 square okay and d will cancel out with d so gone plus rather minus this time because there is a minus here 1600 20 to the power minus 1 this will also cancel 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 20 square minus or minus plus because I'm subtracting again substituting this t uh, this 8 so minus minus becomes 1600 8 to the power minus 1 plus again this minus will become plus 0 0.18 square just we'll put this in our calculators and we'll get it let me try to do it mentally whatever I can by the time i do this i would request you to like this video it takes a lot of efforts to write these questions because of the copyright issues solve them make a video edit and everything it takes a lot of effort only eight percent of my subscribers watch this video 92 percent are unsubscribed so please please subscribe to math united and motivate me to make many such videos in future too thank you so much what I'm getting here is 262 
point two meters or three cm figures if you want two hundred sixty two meters only. That concludes this solution video. I would again request you to subscribe to Math United to motivate me to make to prepare many more videos like this. Thank you so much for your attention and have a good day.